God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll begin studying the ninth chapter of the book of Numbers. I do thank God for you for logging on to watch this ministry. Such a great blessing to know that you're watching. I encourage you to uh, let me know. Uh, they do give me statistics from time to time as to uh, who's listening and where they're listening to me from. But I encourage you when you put uh, when you uh, <clears throat> click on the like button. <coughs> and like me on the World Wide Web, uh, it lets me know where you're from. And uh, uh, that way, if I get enough people in your area, I will come there and I will preach the Word of God in that city and bring up my whole band, if you please, and also sing uh, the songs that uh, God has, has blessed me to write and, and give you a full program and also preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Uh, and if I get enough listeners in whatever area it is, I I will come and I, will, I want you to put me to the test. I ask that you pray for me on a daily basis that God will get the glory out of all that we do. Uh, he's doing so many wonderful things for us. Uh, our listeners uh, are increasing and I do thank God for that. Uh, our songs are being sold all over the world and I thank God for that. I need you to pray with me that God will get the glory uh, out of all that we do. I realize that I'm just a man and I need God's help. I couldn't make this journey without him and I can't make it without you. I need you to pray for me. Well, we're going to the said scripture, the ninth chapter of the book of Numbers, verse 1. The Bible reads as this. And the Lord spoke unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover as it is appoint, uh, its appointed season, at its appointed season. Well, uh, get the picture now. God initiated the Passover. Now, uh, he told us uh, how much time had transpired after they left out of Egypt. Uh, but yet, when God speaks something, he wants you to continue it. And uh, this was uh, the case here. Uh, the Lord is saying, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at its appointed season. Uh, at its appointed season, God has selected a time, and this is when he wanted the Passover to be celebrated. Uh, in verse 3, uh, in the 14th day of this month, uh, at evening, uh, ye shall keep it in its appointed season, uh, according to all uh, the rites of it, uh, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, uh, shall ye keep it. Uh, I'm going to continue you reading them. And Moses spoke unto the children of Israel uh, that they should keep the Passover. Uh, he spoke to all of them that they should keep the Passover. Uh, and I'll let you know the Passover is being celebrated uh, uh, even in the day that we live. From that, from all the way back in Bible days, uh, uh, even until now, the Passover is being celebrated. Uh, thank God for our Jewish brothers and sisters. Uh, they celebrate the Passover. Uh, and in our way, as Christians, we celebrate it as well. Uh, well, uh, uh, shall we read verse 5? And they kept the Passover uh, on the 14th day of the first month of, of the evening in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, uh, so did the children of Israel. Now we're going into some key verses here. I want you to listen to it attentive, attentively as we read. And there were certain men uh, uh, who were defiled by the dead body of a man, uh, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. Uh, and they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. I want you to get this complete picture now. These men, they knew that they had uh, uh, had been defiled by having to touch a dead body. Now, uh, uh, the dis it wasn't a disgrace to touch the dead body, uh, but to go and do uh, the ordinance of the Lord, uh, God had commanded that these things should not be uh, or that they should reverence certain situations uh, through all of the law. And these men knew that they had touched a dead body uh, and they were defiled. Shall I read six again? And they there were certain men who were defiled by 
the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. Well, they knew that they had uh, had touched the dead body, a dead body and they were defiled. If you remember reading in our studies, uh, when someone had touched the dead body, there was a time of purification, the thing that he had to do uh, to, uh, uh, to get back in standing, a right standing. Uh, number one, his sins had to be atoned for, and not only his sins atoned for, but uh, he had to go through certain purifications uh, and keeping himself away from the rest of the children of Israel. Why? Because he, because he uh, had touched something dead uh, or, or, or uh, in observance to the command of the Lord. Uh, and these men knew that they had uh, defiled or had, uh, uh, had handled a dead body and they came and asked Moses these questions. Now let's read verse 7. And those men said unto him, We we are defiled by the dead bodies of a of a man. Wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of the uh, of the Lord in his appointed season uh, among the children of Israel. Uh, now let's get a picture here. Now these men, they knew what they had done. Uh, they knew the law. They had been listening to Moses and, and heard the law presented. Uh, and they came to Moses and said, Are we not to, uh, uh, to, uh, to take of the, of the Passover celebration? And, and a key point here, uh, you need to know that you need to always be honest with yourself uh, and honest with God and honest with those that you deal with. Uh, you got to understand the heart of these men and you have to respect them. Uh, they knew that they had been defiled by touching a dead body instead of them going on and saying, look, I'm just going to serve. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, take of the Passover and, and that's just the way it is. I'm going to do it or, or vice versa. I'm just not going to do it uh, uh, because of this and because of that. Uh, you have to understand their heart and we need to grab and, and grasp hold of what that what is going on here if you know you have did something uh, uh, that you shouldn't be uh, uh, in certain services uh, well it's just good for you to be honest with yourself and honest with other people and say look I, I am not ready for that uh, they came to Moses and asked what shall I do I've touched the dead body now let's read on in, in verse 8 I'll read 7 again for clarification and then verse 8 in verse 7, uh, and those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of the man, uh, wherefore we are kept back, uh, uh, that ye may not offer, that we may not offer an offering uh, uh, of the Lord in its appointed season uh, among the children of Israel. Uh, now, they came and asked, What shall we do? Uh, instead of just blatantly going on to do it, they saying, What shall we do? Uh, in verse 9, And the Lord uh, uh, spoke unto them, Well, let's read 8 again. And Moses said unto them, uh, Stand still, uh, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Uh, in other words, uh, Moses said, We're not going to do anything until we hear from from the Lord. Can you understand the situation here? These men, knowing that they were defiled, came to, uh, to Moses and said, what shall we do? Instead of them blatantly doing it or rebelliously not doing it, what they said, Moses, what shall I do? You got to understand there comes a time uh, 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 and uh, it happens where you don't know what to do. Uh, and these, this was the case of this man, the, these men. So they came to Moses because they didn't know what they did, uh, what, uh, what to do about this situation. Uh, well, you and I ought to have the same heart. Uh, there's sometimes you got to understand uh, if we are not up to where the mark or whatever the case may be, you need to just be honest with yourself. Uh, yeah, and when you're honest with yourself, uh, then be honest honest with God and ask God, what do you want me to do? Uh, you got to understand that many times people will put you somewhere that you're not ready for uh, or people will try to keep you from something uh, that you should be doing. Uh, but it's time then to seek the Lord and ask God, what do you want me to do? Uh, when you ask God what, what he wants you to do, then you'll never go wrong. Uh, well, you got to understand, you got I've lived a long life. I've been in ministry now, uh, uh, 
30 something years now I can't give you the exact amount uh, 35 36 years I've been in in, in ministry uh, that many years uh, and you have to understand I've seen people that that uh, uh, had maybe did something terribly wrong and they were not ready for a certain job you got to understand God when he uh, 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 holds you back or pushes you forward whatever he knows what you can handle and what you can't handle you got to understand people are cruel uh, and when you get pushed up somewhere you're not supposed to be, uh, it can be a bigger detriment to you than you just standing back and saying, look, Lord, uh, let your will be done in my life. Uh, I admire these men because they knew they had touched something to file uh, and fill of them trying to push themselves and, and, and trying to assert rights and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, they just said, well, Lord, what do you want me to do? They went to Moses. Uh, they wanted to keep the Passover true enough. Uh, and uh, it was right uh, you got to understand the Passover, all of the children of Israel were supposed to keep the Passover, but because they're defiled, they didn't know what they were supposed to do. Now let's read on. I'll read 9 again. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, verse 10, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you uh, or of your posterity, uh, of your posterity, uh, what are you talking about? Uh, anybody in your employee, uh, if you uh, or anybody in your prosperity, maybe they work for you or live in your house or whatever and one way or another you're taking care of them, um, shall be unclean by reason of a dead body uh, or be uh, uh, in a journey afar off, um, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Well, here is God giving the answer. Yes, you are supposed to keep the Passover of the Lord. You have to understand when you go to God and he frees you and he commissions you to do something, then it's going to be all right. Why? Because God commissioned it. I'll be honest. I'll just talk to you straight. I'm not, I don't worry about positions and titles and all that kind of stuff. That's not my worry, seeking titles and trying trying to make the top wrong and all that all that good stuff, you know. Nothing wrong with being up there if God places you up there. But sometimes you got to understand uh, that uh, there, there's things in life that, that it may not be for you to be on the top wrong. Uh, but if you serve God and just be honest with God wherever you are, He'll elevate you and He'll put you where you need to be. Uh, don't worry about the, uh, positions and titles. Uh, worry about pleasing God. God. That's your concern. How do I please you, God? Or how do I serve you? How do you want me to serve you? Uh, he may let you serve God exactly where you are. And then he might just take you on up and put you wherever he wants to put you. Uh, why? Because he's God. Uh, but I challenge you, always be honest with yourself. Uh, always be honest with other people. Uh, and know uh, that you need to go before God and say, look, my hands may not be clean. Uh, I may Maybe uh, uh, something is defiled in one way or another. Uh, and go to God and just be straight about it. Uh, and he will commission you uh, and tell you what you need to do. Uh, and that was the case of these men. Uh, they didn't know what to do. <clears throat> They didn't know uh, 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 because that they had defiled, been defiled with the dead body. They were uncertain. Uh, but I challenge you, you can go to the right source uh, and get the answer you need. What you are supposed to do. These men went to Moses. Uh, Moses instructed them, to, let's just stand still uh, and let's seek the Lord about it. Uh, and God instructed them to go and receive uh, of the Lord's Passover. Uh, well, shall we continue reading in verse 11? Uh, the 14th day of the second month uh, at evening they shall keep it uh, and eat it with unleavened bread uh, and bitter herbs. Uh, they shall leave none of it uh, unto the morning, uh, nor break any bones of it according to all the ordinances uh, of the Passover. They shall keep it. Uh, not only the men uh, uh, that were uh, uh, that were defiled by the dead body, uh, but everybody in Israel uh, was supposed to keep the Passover uh, and do everything uh, according to the ordinance uh, or how God had instructed. 
in verse 13, uh, but the man that is clean. Uh, now, you got to understand, we just talked about a man that was unclean. Uh, he was defiled by a dead body. Uh, now, here we're talking about a man that is clean. Uh, but the man that is clean uh, and is not in a journey uh, and forbear to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. Uh, in other words, uh, you clean, you haven't did anything wrong, uh, but you just saying, I am not going to take the Lord's Passover. I'm just not going to do it. For whatever reason you have in your mind, according to the word of the Lord, this man was to be cut completely off away from, from Israel, completely away from his people. Let's read it again. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbear to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. Because he brought not the offering of the Lord in its appointed season, that man shall bear his sin. In other words, you're more in trouble than the one that was defiled by the dead body. You you haven't did it, you haven't defiled yourself, and, and but you just say, I am not going to take the Lord's Passover. You're more in trouble than that one that had uh, had uh, committed that act and, and defiled himself with a dead body. Well, I hope you hear me today. Uh, you got to understand God judges some many things different than we do. Uh, we judge everything about how clean a person's life may have been. You got to understand a lot of people just haven't been caught in what they've done. Uh, and I'm not telling, trying to tell you everybody's a sinner or anything of that nature. Some people got hidden sins. Uh, they may not have done anything wrong on the outside because they, they, they're afraid to. Uh, or they just chicken, whatever your case may be. Or they may have... Uh, uh, may not have done nothing on the outside, but their heart is corrupt. Uh, in them, their heart is corrupt. you got to understand, God, he looks at the heart uh, and not just the outside of a man and what a man does. Uh, well, uh, uh, let me read 13, 13 again and continue. Uh, but the man that is, un that is clean and is not in a journey uh, and for Forbear to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of the Lord in its appointed season. That man shall bear his sins. You will bear your sins. Let's read verse 14. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you and will keep of uh, the Passover unto the Lord, uh, according to the statutes of the Passover, and according to the ordinance of it, uh, so shall he do. Uh, ye shall have uh, one ordinance, uh, both for the sojourner uh, and for him uh, that is born in the land. Uh, can you understand what he's saying? Uh, somebody has, has come and sojourned in your land, uh, or you, because you're of your posture, prosperity, or you've gotten enough money to hire people that is not of your brethren when you bring them in the land. Well, there's an ordinance for them. They can receive of the Lord's Passover. Well, you have to read and know what the ordinance is on how they do and what they're supposed to do. I'll read that last clause again. Ye shall have one ordinance both for the sojourner and for him that was born in the land. One ordinance for for the sojourner. Only one. Uh, not because he's from another land. Uh, he, he's not like us, so he can't do what we do. Uh, but one ordinance is for the sojourner, one, and, and an ordinance, uh, both of them the same, all of them the same. When you come before the Lord, God will not put a difference between uh, whatever you are and what, what uh, the situation you're in. Uh, you're coming before him to worship him in the pureness of your heart. Uh, I better read that last clause again, uh, so shall he do. He shall have one ordinance, one ordinance common, uh, both for the sojourner and for that was born, him that was born in the land. All right then, shall we continue in verse 15? Uh, and on the day that the tabernacle was, re was reared up uh, or raised up, uh, the cloud covered the tabernacle, uh, namely the tent of the testimony. Uh, and at evening, uh, there was upon uh, the tabernacle, uh, as it were, appearance of fire uh, until the morning. Uh, can you understand? Uh, uh, in that day, 
today. They didn't have the technology that we have today, so you can't say it was a trick. Well, this particular thing, a cloud descended upon the tabernacle uh, in the daytime and in the night. It was as it was fire. As it was a fire, it appeared to be fire. Now the tabernacle was not burnt up, but this is what was over it. Now let's read in verse 16. So it was always the cloud covering it by day uh, and the appearance of fire by night. It was always that way. Uh, 17, uh, and when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, uh, then after uh, that the children of Israel uh, journeyed, uh, and in the place where the cloud abode, uh, the children of Israel pitched their tent. Uh, in other words, when the cloud would move, uh, then so would the tabernacle and the peace, uh, all of the people move when the cloud moved. Now let's read in verse 18. And the commandment of the Lord of uh, the children of Israel journeyed uh, at the commandment uh, the command of the Lord. They encamped as long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle. They rested in their tent. When the cloud stayed still, they stood still. When the cloud would move, they would journey as well. Let's read verse 19. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. That's the reason that all of you are hung up on the 40 years that the children of Israel was in the uh, in the wilderness. Uh, well, you got to understand, they had a command. Uh, when the cloud didn't move, they were not supposed to move. Uh, yes, it might have been a short distance to the promised land, uh, but they had to obey God. Uh, when the cloud did not move, uh, they could not move. Uh, let's read on. I'll read verse 20 now. Uh, and so it was. Uh, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents uh, according to the commandments of the Lord. They journeyed. Now verse 21, and so it was when the cloud abode from evening until the morning uh, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, uh, then they journeyed, uh, whether it was by day or by night, uh, and the cloud was taken up uh, and they journeyed. Can you understand? When the cloud was taken up, uh, they journeyed. Uh, but if the cloud was over the temple, they could not journey. Uh, why? They had to obey God. Uh, it's important for you to obey God. Now let's read verse 22. Or whether it were two days uh, or a month uh, or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle remaining thereon, uh, the children of Israel abode in their tents. Uh, I need to read that again. Uh, verse 22, or uh, whether it were two days now uh, or a month. Uh, two days a month. Now that's a long time. That's a big difference between two days a month. Whatever it was. Uh, if the cloud didn't move, they stood still. Uh, if the cloud hovered over them, they, uh, they stood still. When the cloud would move, uh, then they would move. I, hear, I want you to hear that. Uh, or whether it were two days or, or a month uh, or a year. Now, now, that's a long time staying in one spot. Uh, if the cloud stayed there a year, they stayed a year. Uh, that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, uh, remaining thereon, uh, the children of Israel abode in their tents uh, and journeyed not. Uh, but when it was taken up, uh, they journeyed. Journey. When it was taken up, they journeyed. Now, uh, let's read verse 23. Uh, at the commandment of the Lord, uh, they rested in their tents. Uh, and at the commandment of the Lord, uh, they journeyed. Uh, they kept the charge of the Lord. Uh, at the commandment uh, of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Uh, this is how important it is uh, for you to know that to obey God. Uh, Sometimes it might seem unseemly uh, to obey him because you got to understand understand the minds of people. Uh, well, we can make it over there in just a little in no time. Uh, if we just keep moving, we'll get on up out of this mess. Uh, but you got to understand, if you don't obey God, you can move too fast uh, and end up in catastrophe. Uh, but if you obey God, uh, it may seem like a long time. Uh, it may seem like nothing is going to ever happen uh, or you'll never make your destiny. But I but I guarantee you, uh, if you obey God, uh, God... <coughs> 
God will get you uh, to your destination. Uh, well, my friends, I want you to know that I love you. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, if you would like to contact me for any reason, uh, if you would like to purchase our music, uh, well, let me let you know when I sing, I, I clear out my throat and uh, I take the appropriate, appropriate allergy medicine to, to not cough and all of that good stuff. And, and my songs are very good and you will be blessed if you, if you purchase them and you will also also be a blessing to this ministry uh, if you purchase my music. Uh, good music uh, is anointed uh, and God will bless you through it. We just released a new song uh, called Life Happens. Uh, it's on iTunes already, Amazon already, Amazon.com. It's uh, Spotify, and I could go down a whole list, Rhapsody, and, and uh, Cloud, whatever all that stuff is. I can't go through every name, but it's out there for you to purchase right now. Uh, pick up Life Happens. Uh, it will be a blessing to you. Uh, it will encourage you along the way. Uh, remember, I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, if you would like to contact me, you can contact me at the Work with Chester Ministry, Post Office Box 2006. Zero three, uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78220. Uh, you can also reach me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, remember, I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, God bless you.